Welcome back guys and thank you for joining us here today on The King of Random. A little while ago, I saw a video of something that seemed impossible, lighting a fire using water. It's an experiment that I want to try and replicate here today and find a recipe that will work every time. I did a little bit of research and found that this chemical mixture is something that's called negative X, although I couldn't find anything that explained why it was called that. So if you have a source that tells me where the name came from, please let me know down in the comments. I found a recipe for this mixture that uses only three ingredients before you add the water. Ammonium nitrate, ammonium chloride, and zinc powder. So first I'll talk a little bit about what each of these ingredients are and where you can get them, and then we'll see if we can make fire from water. Ammonium nitrate is a nitrate salt that's frequently used as a type of fertilizer, and when it mixes with water, it produces an endothermic reaction. Endothermic means that it gets really cold, and that actually has to do with where we can get ammonium nitrate. You can buy these instant cold packs that are full of a bag of water and ammonium nitrate beads. There are a few different types of these cold packs, so make sure you check on the box to see that it says that it contains ammonium nitrate. I got these ones at Target, and the ammonium nitrate in it works really well for this experiment. The next ingredient is ammonium chloride, which is an inorganic compound fairly similar to table salt. It's often sold in blocks like this with a primary use of cleaning the tips of soldering irons. In a few countries like the Netherlands, you can also find it in a powdered form on the outside of black licorice candy. The box this came in has a warning on it that says to make sure you don't ingest any of it, but because it is used as a food in some places, I'm going to lick it and see what it's like. All right, so this stuff, it's weird. It feels like licking salt and a nine volt battery at the same time. I don't know exactly what the chemical reaction happening is, but it really like buzzes and fizzes on your tongue a little bit. It's very strange. I've never had a food product do that before. And in case any of you were worried, I did look up the safety specs for this stuff and I would have to eat a fair amount of this block before I really had to be worried about my health. The last ingredient we need today is zinc. And zinc is a fairly common metal, but we need it in a very pure form, and unless you have just the right equipment, we need to buy it to get it in this very fine powder. Now we know our three ingredients, let's try mixing them together to see if we can start a fire using water. To start, we'll measure off six grams of the ammonium nitrate. Next, we'll scrape off one gram of our ammonium chloride from the block. Before we add our zinc, we want to grind our first two ingredients together into a fine powder. In a separate container or on a piece of paper, measure out 14 grams of the zinc powder. Now we haven't mixed the two together yet because as soon as they are combined, you have something that's incendiary, meaning it can catch fire very easily. And we don't want to do that while we're indoors. Apparently you're not even supposed to mix this stuff up if it's raining outside or particularly humid because it can catch fire just from that. So we're gonna take our ingredients outside, carefully mix them together, and then see if we can light them on fire just using water. We're going to mix the ingredients using what's called the diaper method. Pour all of your powdered ingredients onto a piece of paper and then lift the corners to gently mix them together. These larger, lighter colored bits are the ammonium nitrate that probably weren't ground up quite enough. We'll see if it will still work even though I didn't grind it into quite as fine as a powder as I should have. All right, I've got our negative X mixture sitting on this piece of foil to protect the ground underneath it. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of water and then back off because when this burns, it releases zinc fumes, which are not good for you. Here goes nothing. There we go. Now it's starting, but I don't know why it took that long. Wow, look at that flame. That is such a cool, bright green-blue color. Okay, look off to the side. You can actually see it's spitting little bits of burning zinc. faster. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, okay, so I had a bunch of the negative X mixed up getting ready to burn it in separate little piles, 
But remember my warning about how you're not supposed to mix it up on a humid day? Today is a little bit humid. There's clouds in the sky and apparently that was enough to set it off. The bowl that it was in was completely dry, no water got sprayed on it whatsoever, and it ignited. It just burst into flames and it actually completely destroyed uh, the my mixing bowl as well. You can probably see right here, there's just shards of glass. The extreme heat from that just demolished it. So, gonna have to get a new one of those, but that worked really well. So this is what is left over from this mixture. You've seen it on the other pieces of foil as well. This is zinc oxide. And then of course, little bits of shattered glass everywhere because that's why you don't mix it up until right before you're ready to use it. So I am extremely glad that I took a small precaution while it was just sitting in that bowl. It was originally sitting right next to my phone on the ground and I didn't think it was gonna light on fire, but I thought just in case, because in theory, this stuff can just sort of spontaneously combust, I moved it out of the way and kind of behind this pole so that there would be a layer of protection and then it lit on fire and I'm happy to report that my phone was not damaged. I managed to pull it out of the way even though it was about a foot away. It does sort of send little sparks of molten zinc through the air. All right guys, I've mixed up another batch and I'm about to start gently mixing it in this plastic bag and I'm gonna pour it out onto the foil. But it has actually started to rain a little bit. Maybe I didn't choose the best day to do this experiment, so what I think is gonna happen is I'm gonna start pouring this powder out and it's just gonna start lighting on fire after a couple seconds because there's even water on the foil already. So let's just watch what happens. All right, I've poured it out. So far it doesn't look like anything is lit on fire. It's not raining very heavily. So it might be that there isn't enough for it to start quickly. If it doesn't start in the next few seconds, I'm just gonna grab the spray bottle and get it going. Unbelievable. I'm giving it some help. It doesn't light as well if it's not in a pile. New plan, I'm just gonna pile it up instead of leaving it in a snake. Try not to breathe just cooling it down a little bit. Okay guys, I'm gonna call that a success despite a few hiccups here and there. We got the Negative X to light on fire using just water. At first it took a little bit longer than I expected, so I mixed up a new batch, being sure to grind it into a much finer powder. While we were doing our second test, the bowl with the rest of our batch burst into flames. I don't know if it was too humid outside or if a stray raindrop hit it or if the natural chemical process that takes place in this reaction just started on its own, which can happen. To understand what was going on, let's talk a little bit about the chemistry behind this reaction. When the water interacts with the ammonium chloride, it lets the chloride act as a catalyst on the ammonium nitrate. The ammonium nitrate breaks up into nitrous oxide and water. The water continues to react with more ammonium nitrate, spreading the reaction. At the same time, the nitrous oxide begins reacting with the zinc, forming zinc oxide, and that puts off zinc oxide and nitrogen gas. So then the whole thing puts out a whole lot of heat, lights on fire, and what you're left with is zinc oxide, nitrogen gas, and water in the form of steam. You can see the residue left over. This is mostly zinc oxide. Of course, the nitrogen gas and the water in the form of steam dissipated into the air. A word again about the safety of this stuff. As I think you've seen, it can be pretty dangerous. It takes just a little bit of water and only a couple seconds to light on fire. Or in the case of what I had in the mixing bowl, it takes, I don't even know, maybe just humidity in the air and there was enough of it in one spot that it just ignited and it broke my mixing bowl because it was so hot so fast. So be very careful with this stuff. You cannot store it. Even if you have a clean, dry jar, eventually the ammonium chloride will start to react with the ammonium nitrate. So never make this until you're ready to use it. Also be aware that the zinc fumes are toxic, so you want to be upwind from your mixture. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I look forward to the next one. Talk to you then. Also, you should lick this stuff. It's weird. Look at that, that's your zinc oxide right there. Just turns to dust. There's also a little bit of wind. Here goes nothing. Oh, come on. You right there, the one who just watched this video to the end, you are the reason that we work so hard to make these videos. It's for people like you. 
Thank you very kindly for being as supportive as you are. You keep watching the videos, and we'll keep making more.